Okay guys, here we go. I've got my packs, I've got 10 packs here, and these packs are about 1500 milliamp hours each. So the way the math works is when you add packs to a parallel charging array, you add up the capacity. So if we've got 10 1500 milliamp hour packs, that's 15,000 milliamp hours in total. At a 1C charge rate would be 15 amps. So, well, it can only go up to 14 amps, but hey, we're gonna set it to 14 amps and start. And away we go. What do we got here? Now let's go over, yeah, here we go. So our input voltage is 12.2 volt, and we're pulling 36, 45, 53 watts. See, it's going up. Let's just watch it go up and see what happens. That's not 14 amps, and that is definitely not 300 watts. That's 180 watts, and just barely even not 11 amps. What is going on here? Lies, all lies. <laughs> the reason actually has to do with this, the input voltage. Look at the input voltage, 12.1 volts. Let's dig into this more, and in order to do that, we're gonna need to do some math. All right, guys, bear with me. I've literally just kind of commandeered the corner of a stairwell at this house we're staying in on the Rotor Riot shoot. But I really want to get this video out for you, so please give me a little bit of latitude with the audio. There's a little bit of noise in the background, some rain and stuff. Let's get to the good stuff, which is the math. The formula we got to deal with is watts equals volts times amps. And that is Ohm's law. And if you're going to talk about electricity, you've got to understand Ohm's law. So this formula is just simple multiplication and division. And that means we can sort of shuffle it around. Uh, to say also that watts divided by volts equals amps. And what that means is, let's take a ISDTQ6 charger with a 300 watt output rating. Well, if we take 300 watts and we divide by 16.8 volts, that's a four cell pack, how many amps does that work out to? It works out to 17.8 amps. And that starts to show the problem because the ISDT chart Q6 is only rated at 14 amps max. So the first thing you gotta understand is that the, the ratings of these specs are, it's like a, a car warranty where they say 12,000 miles or two years, whichever comes first. When, it, when you see a charger and it's rated for 300 watts and 14 amps, it doesn't mean that you're gonna get both of those all the time. It means whichever one you hit first, that's your limit. So let's work this the other way and take 300 watts divided by 14 amps and we get 21 volts. And what that means is that the charger can only hit its full output wattage if the voltage is 21 volts or higher because otherwise the amp limit will come into play and you will not hit your max amp limit. Let's ask this question the other way around. If we have a 14 amp limit and we're charging a four cell pack at 16.8 volts, how many watts are we gonna be outputting? 235 watts. So uh, what this tells you is that for this Q6 charger, the 14 amp limit means that if you're charging four cell packs, you're only ever gonna get 235 watts out of it. You'll never hit that full 300 watt limit. And this is something that charger manufacturers really commonly do. The watt limit is based on the highest voltage that the battery can put out. Because of Ohm's law, what it means is that when you're pushing more volts you can have more watts with fewer amps, and amps are really the limiting factor here because amps cause heat buildup. So when you see a charger like the ISD T8 that says it's gonna do a thousand watts, that's assuming that you're doing an 8S pack, and if you're not doing an 8S pack, you're doing a 4S pack, you're not gonna hit that full output rating. But there's even more to this, and this is the thing that everybody overlooks, and that is the input amp rating. And what that means is that the amps, I said earlier, amps are the limit because amps cause heat to build up. The more amps you're pushing, the more heat builds up and then things melt and explode and light on fire and that's bad news. The input amp limit on these chargers is designed to keep the charger from drawing an unsafe amount of power from the power supply and like melting itself. And for the ISDT Q6, the input amp limit is I think it's 14 amps, and this is going to surprise some of you because a lot of charger manufacturers don't publish the input amp limit, but make no mistake, it is there. So let's back up and just take these numbers out of here and say, 
on the input side, if we're pulling 14 amps, that's the maximum the ISDTQ6 will pull, and we're pulling 12 volts from a 12 volt power supply, how many watts are we pulling? And the answer to that is 168 watts. Now here's the cool thing about watts. Whenever you're doing voltage conversions, like you have a 12 volt power supply supplying the, the charger, but you're outputting 16 volts because you're charging a four cell pack. Whenever you're doing voltage conversions, watts is the unit that you can use to accomplish that conversion. Watts is a unit of power and, and the power in is always equal to the power out minus any efficiency losses. Voltage conversion is never 100% efficiency. You lose a little bit of power to the voltage conversion. But what it tells you is that if you have 168 watts going into the charger, you cannot get more than 168 watts out. That's just physics, okay? So, so what it means is that if you're running your ISDTQ6 off of a 12 volt power supply, it will never be a 100, a 300 watt charger ever. It won't even get you to that 250 watts that we talked about earlier because of the output amp limit. The input amp limit is going to limit you to 168 watts. Yikes. I bet that's not what you were expecting. On the flip side, if we were using a 24 volt power supply, we would have a 14 amp input rating. That's the limit on the input side times 24 volts and we would have 336 potential watts that we could pull. And at that point, the input amp limit is no longer the restricting factor. Now we can, we have 336 amps that we can bring in, but there's only 300 watts, or 336 watts we can bring in, but there's only 300 watts that we can output, and that means that the power supply is no longer the limiting factor. And that should be the goal. That should be our goal. Now this is true for every charger, and my, my experience, the chargers typically have an input amp limit between 12 and 16 amps. Almost no chargers have a, a greater input amp limit than that. So let's work those numbers slightly. If we have 12 volts times 16 amps, that means that on a 12 volt power supply, the most you can ever expect to get out of almost any charger you can think of is going to be 192 watts, a little bit less than that due to efficiency losses. If you have a 300 watt, a 600 watt, a 1000 watt charger, if you're powering it off at 12 volts, you're, ne you're really not gonna get more than about 170 to 190 watts out of it. And that's why 24 volt power supplies are such a big deal. If you've got a charger that's a 150 watt charger, then you're fine because you're not restricted by the power supply voltage. But if you've got a bigger charger, you really want to be powering it off of 24 volts, if at all possible. And that's why if we take a look over here, this power supply, this is what inspired me to make this video, is Race Day Quads has released this power supply, which is a 400 watt, 24 volt power supply. And over here, we've got a 300 watt, 12 volt power supply. But that 12 volt power supply is not as useful as it seems because your charger is gonna limit you to a little under 200 watts. So that extra 100 watts that the power supply is capable of making is not that useful. But the 24 volt 400 watt power supply, that's fantastic because your charger, your 300 or 400 watt charger can fully take advantage of the power that it's capable of supplying. You know, there is one exception to this and that is if you're going to run many smaller supplies, uh, many smaller chargers, then something like a 300 watt or a 700 watt 12 volt supply could be useful. As long as each individual charger is not pulling more than about 170 to 190 watts, then you have some advantage. You could just run all of them off the same power supply. But if you're running a single charger that is at more, that's trying to pull more than about 200 watts, you really want to be using a 24 volt supply. And this is a great one. There are other ones you can get. You can get some of them off of Amazon or off of Banggood, but this one comes pre, uh, comes with a power cord, comes pre-wired with the xt 60s kind of ready to go. Whatever you get, you really want a 24 volt supply if at all possible. And that's the gist of this video. So we're gonna close out the video because I hear something else is going on. If this didn't make sense to you, let me know. Put your questions down below. No, it's kind of awesome. Come on, get in here. When you're in paradise, you go swim, you go to the roof, and you rip long range straight to the beach. Yeah, I'm not criticizing. <laughs> I just thought the juxtaposition of the pool gear and the quad at the same time. Yeah. I didn't really see that very often. Yeah, no. All right. It's, I All right, love guys. my life. What can I say? It's hard.
It's hard, you guys, but I take time out of this madness to make videos about math for you. I hope you appreciate my sacrifice.